Well, hello everyone. My name is Rick Pasek, fly fish fanatic, and welcome to my tying bench. Uh, today we'll be doing uh, probably, well, not probably, my favorite uh, river pattern, and that is the, sorry, I got a hair sitting here. And that is the uh, hare's ear. Um, it's actually going to be the bead headed uh, gold ribbed hare's ear. Um, it's, if, I know it's a stupid question, but you hear the question sometimes if, you know, uh, if you had to pick one fly, which one would it be? this would be it. Uh, this is by far my favorite fly for rivers. Uh, and I know it works really well in lakes as well. Um, if I had to pick one for both river and lakes, I'd probably go with the pheasant tail. Um, but uh, again, that's, it's a, it's a, such a dumb question because you just, you never know from day to day what's hatching and, and stuff. So, but for rivers, this is almost always one of my first flies on. So now this got a little twist to it, but you'll see. Alrighty. So let's get going. So we'll start today with a Hens uh, BL254N in a size 8. Now this is a fairly short shanked hook. Um, that's why I'm using the size 8. Um, but uh, 8, 10, 12, 14 is what I tie these on. I usually don't go much smaller. So I'm just going to just put that in lightly for now because i got to get a gold bead for this. And my beads kind of fell out on me a couple days ago, so I've got a couple of different sizes mixed in, so I just have to pick out the right size. Actually, I should turn on my light here so I can actually see. Hey, look, what happens when you turn on the light? I can see better. So, and I'm going to use a white thread on this one. I could use uh, pretty well any color, um, but I'm going to use white nano silk. So that's what I'm using, a white nano silk and a 12 on. Start my thread behind my bead. Get it locked down. Skizzers. Excuse me for a second while I just make one little adjustment here because I like having one of these. I don't know about you guys, but I like using these are the drawer liners. I like having that down on my desk here. That way, uh, when I put my scissors down, you don't hear the, right? So, and I like having them anyway, because usually my vice doesn't slip and stuff like that then, right? So, okay, up to the front. Now, I'll take a whoop, hair's mask. There you go, there's the ears. So right below the ears, um, or even on the ears if I can find the right length, but right below the ears I've got some spiky, spiky little uh, hairs on this mask. I've got some longer spiky hairs kind of below the ears between the eyes. I'm just going to grab a little handful and nip off of the, so that's what I'm going to end up. That's the butt end and then that's the, short, uh, the front end. So I'm just going to grab by the tips really tight and pull out any under fur. Now I keep that under fur because I use it for dubbing for the rest of this fly. But I want about the length of the body sticking past, so about there. So that's going to bring it back. Get a couple of loose wraps over top. Oh, come on, there you go. All right, I like using these. Now you can use other materials, but I like using all hairs mask for this. So again, nice and tight. That's why I like using these nano silks. And then I'm going to go under and I'm going to pull towards the bead and then over. And that helps just prop that up. There we go. Now just, just build up here a little bit just to match that where that tie in was because you've got that little bit of a bump right there. Right? Sorry, I was going to undo my vise just pop that back up for you so it's level then I'm gonna take some uh, in this case uh, I've got the Danville's oval tinsel size 14 in a in a gold really like this oval tinsel how it uh, stands out so I'm gonna tie that in on my side a couple of turns and then I pull it back until I know it's past that bead and then I'll just run it down the side and put this into my material clip keep it out of my way 
And now it's up to you which way you would like to dub. You can hand dub, you can dubbing loop it. Uh, I'm gonna hand dub, so a little bit of wax. And I'm gonna grab my, that little bit of fluff and spikes that I pulled out when I did the tail. It's not gonna be enough, so I'm gonna have to pull some more. So I don't cut it off, I just, I grab and I, I just, uh, I just pull off, pull off the mask. And there you go. The only time I cut off the mask is for the tail. Okay, bring that forward. And then once I've start dubbing, as soon as I get a purchase, I'll tighten up and tighten up. All right, I want it to be a bit spiky, but not crazy. So I want to keep it a fairly decent tension. I don't want too big of a, of a body here. So now I'm going to stop about there. I come back over top a little bit, back in front, because I'm going to, that's going to be my thorax area. So now I'm going to go one, two, three, and I'll come all the way around just to be able to tie it off on that area where there is nothing. Cut off my oval tinsel. And just make sure that's all tightened down nicely. I come back behind the eye. Now this is the little twist that I like doing on these. I really, really like the effect that this gives. Um, and you can do whatever color you like. There's about 30 different colors of this stuff. Um, maybe not 30, but quite a few. And that is the uh, Hens Pearl Scudback. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go with this. I think it's number 30. It's kind of a dark blacky purpley kind of color. And I just cut off a piece. And I'm just going to lay it on my side here just to get it started. A couple of wraps, let it spread, whatever. A couple of wraps, just pull that back so it's again, not a little far. I need to put it there. Okay, and then just get those little tags. Okay, now back to the back again to where you tied in that scud back, wax my thread little bit more this time I'm trying to get some of these more spiky the spiky uh, hairs from right between the eyes they're kind of spikier and, and a little a little harder right so they'll stand out just a little bit more and I want to build up a bit of a a heavier thorax so I'm going to dub this on try not to get too much of the under fur but so this is going to be just a little heavier this time up here because I want a bit of a bigger thorax a bit of fatter thorax okay then I'm going to grab that over top that a couple of loose-ish wraps, make sure it's sitting right in the middle. You're not gonna get a huge shell back out of this, but enough. It's just a little hot spot is what it is. So, okay. Now that I know what's tied in, I'll cut that off. And then I'm gonna whip finish for now. Trying to catch that little piece of that, that scud back that's there. Try to catch that in. One more. Cut that off. Then I'm going to take my little piece of uh, my popsicle stick with the Velcro and just go on, on the underside. I don't want to touch that scud back stuff because that stuff will fray. So I'm just going to pull out just a little bit of that, that under body there of the thorax you can even do a little bit right on the uh, the main body that you did at first just to get it kind of scruffier and that whoop, uh, of course I moved my vice that is my version of the hair zero nymph I love this version um, I, like I said I do tie it with 
several different colors of that scud back. I like it in this dark and I like it in the chartreuse as well. Um, but there's so many different colors you could use. But uh, yeah, that's, that is my version of the hair's ear. It, uh, it works really well. It's really buggy. Um, if you want it heavier, just put some uh, sticky back flat lead in the underbody. Uh, just in the in the back in the front section, sorry. So it it kind of acts almost like a jig. I do tie a jig head version of this as well, um, and I put a heavier jig on it. Um, so yeah, but uh, yeah, that's my uh, my one of my favorite river patterns for rainbow trout. It uh, it's an absolute killer. It really has done so well for me over the years. I just noticed I should probably pull a little bit more out on this side to even up, making it look like those legs. There we go. There, see that? But that's that's my, like I said, one of my favorite flies. So yeah, give that one a go. It's a classic pattern. It's not hard to tie. Uh, just make sure that you, uh, you you get a get a hair's mask, an actual mask. Um, you see, you've got so many different. You got these really fluffy fibers out out here. You got these really spiky ones on the ear itself. You've in between the face, you've got some that are spiky and fluffy. So you've got so many different uh, versions of of the hair that you can use, and it really makes these these things. Don't go out and buy hairs hairs ear uh, dubbing. Go buy the hairs mask. So, alrighty. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Uh, that one is uh, is a, is definitely an absolute must in your uh, river box and even in your lake box. So. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and uh, if you subscribed, thank you. If you have not, please consider doing so. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it, and uh, share, share, share. Talk to you soon. Tie lines, everyone. <laughs>